What's going on, you 3D modeling beasts? This is JL Musi. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a little known job market that doesn't get a lot of recognition as far as the employment probabilities for 3D artists. Before we get started, make sure to download your copy of the Hard Surface Modeling Cheat Sheets. This is a PDF resource that I put together to help you kickstart your 3D modeling, and you can do so using this link right here. The job market that I'm specifically referring to is 3D product design. Obviously, this job market is not a secret as there's many designers actually working in it. The reason that I'm creating this video is that many of the 3D artists that consume my content, and even me starting out, I only thought that you only had job employment opportunities working in video games or working in VFX. And that is actually not the case. There are different pockets that use 3D artists to create different 3D assets for different industries. And 3D product design is one of them. So I do wanna shine a little bit of light into this industry and also the employment opportunities that you do have. How this video came about is Hector, which is a student of mine within my 3D modeling course. He actually wanted me to review his portfolio, and that is a service that I do for members of my 3D modeling course. But I did decide to add this brief introduction to the video before we jump into the actual portfolio review of Hector, because like I mentioned earlier, a lot of artists don't really know that these opportunities exist. And sometimes these jobs or these job opportunities keep you in the game while you work out your 3D skills even if you want to ultimately go into video games or VFX, these are opportunities that you can find within 3D product design. I want to start the video here with this blog post from a studio called 3D Ace. And you see across the top there that they do a lot of different 3D modeling services. One is product design. And they actually have a great little article highlighting some of the benefits of product design. And I want to highlight these two points here. You see that they can be used for promotions and marketing. And if we take a closer look at their portfolio, you'll see these type of images. These images are very prevalent in commercials here. We have a sneaker and these are very widely used for electronics as well. So all these Samsung Galaxy phones on the commercials where you see phones rotating around, you'll also see these on iPhones. All those are 3D models and they're incorporated into the commercials. Here's another example of 3D product design used in commercials. And these are these Dre B buds. And the 3D model gives a lot of options to create great commercials because you have a lot more capabilities versus actually shooting the static real life object. And you could do a lot of these cool breakaway animations where the objects disassemble and reassemble. The last example that I wanna bring out of product design, and this is very prevalent, is furniture design. If you ever gone to a website or looked at a catalog for most furniture stores, most of those furniture pieces are actually 3D modeled. They need 3D artists to create these assets. And again, 3D modeling these products give the creatives a lot more flexibility than actually using the real life counterparts. And this is a job market that you could definitely look into, especially if you hadn't had much traction getting to work into video games or VFX. Let's go ahead and move on and get into Hector's portfolio review. So I'm looking at Hector's portfolio here. I'm gonna focus on his best three main pieces and how to improve those works. I'm gonna start with a very strong piece in my opinion. Some things that could be improved upon is the background, first of all. I think the background's a little bit too strong, too distracting and the colors are pretty saturated. I like backgrounds that don't really compete with the foreground objects. And this is somewhat still pretty strong in the saturation. And I know that he tried to blur it a little bit, but I think it's still a little bit too busy and kind of detracts from the foreground objects. I think the lighting on this piece can be improved a little bit. I'm not a fan of this dark shadow right in the front. Maybe more of a three-point lighting setup where you had a key and a fill, kind of giving it more light towards the front and then maybe dropping a 
rim light to just kind of basically describe that uh, shape and help it pop from the background. The other thing that I'm noticing about these textures is that they're all relatively flat. I could be wrong on this and maybe it's a very subtle effect, but I really don't see any normal information on those wood planks on the actual table itself and the toast and things that should have a little bit of depth information that could be essentially captured via a normal map uh, definitely could come into play and make these textures pop a little bit more as well as using some roughness maps all these specular highlights are pretty even so that's a clear indicator that no roughness maps were used and on some things it works okay but on some materials it's good to break up the roughness a little bit and that's what starts pushing things from a computer graphics look to a more realistic look that you're obviously going for here but overall i do like the piece i think it could be pushed a little bit further with the recommendations that i stated earlier the next piece here is this speak easy going more for a dramatic look and this is obviously an environmental piece with two renders my suggestion on this first render is I know you're going for more of a dramatic look within the lighting. Sometimes dramatic lighting can be a double-edged sword because it can look cool, but sometimes dramatic lighting can hide a lot of the modeling and texture work that you did. So I'm not a fan of really dramatic lighting, especially if it's very, very dark. And if you are gonna go the dramatic route, Think about putting things like a rim light again. I mentioned this before. And maybe a couple different spotlights to bring a little bit more light to certain focal areas here. Because a lot of this great work that you did with the modeling and the texturing in this render is actually getting lost within the absence of proper lighting. This next render here is a lot better. I could see a lot of the details, a lot of the textures. So I really like this look here, and I'm not sure how this was lit. Maybe use a IBL, maybe use an image to light a lot of this. Sometimes when you do image-based lighting, it just depends on how that image is rotated, and sometimes you get the right angle on that environment light, and you get a lot better result. Always think about the objects in relation to the camera and the subdivisions of those objects. For example, this chair here, you could really see the faceting since it's so close to the camera. So if your poly count allows for it, maybe try to budget a little bit more higher poly count on curved surfaces that are closer to the camera. That way that faceting is not so obvious. A subtle ambient occlusion pass can really push the depth of your objects. Obviously it is a balancing act. You don't wanna to go too strong with the ambient occlusion. And if you could include that ambient occlusion in a separate pass where you can play with the levels and the opacity of that AO to just really give it a touch and not have it too strong is an ideal scenario. The last piece here in the portfolio is this accent chair. I do like the overall clean presentation of this with a white background. It really speaks to how a lot of product designs are actually presented. Uh, I do like that you did include this cloth and I have the luxury since you sent it to me to actually be looking at the real life counterpart. And I do have some suggestions on how to get it closer to that reference that you submitted. Uh, one of the things that I'm noticing right off the back is the texture size or that UV tiling is a little bit off. So here that pattern, that cloth pattern that is basically throughout this accent chair looks to be a little bit bigger so if you were actually to take a UV tile and set those coordinates to repeat a bit more, you would have finer threads on that. And that's something that you do have to pay attention. Obviously, a lot of this is going to be dependent on how your UVs are laid out. And if you wanted to get some of these closer shots here that are within your reference, you might want to think about going into a UDIM workflow where you actually have multiple UV tiles, and that's gonna be able to uh, let you get in a lot closer with your camera and still have very, very close high res textures just because of that UDEM workflow, which ultimately 
will allow for a higher texture resolution, especially on closed shots. Looking at this render here, I'm not sure if you only used diffuse information or you did actually put in some normal and some roughness, but it does look somewhat flat. So again, keep those things in mind when you use a package like Substance Painter, these uh, extra maps that are gonna give a lot more pop, the roughness and the normal are very easy to create. Also, if you're using a package like Substance Painter, these weed patterns are very easy to create with all these uh, different channels that are really gonna make this pattern come to life. And this pattern is pretty important as it is the main pattern that is draped all through this sofa. But overall, great work, Hector. And with some small tweaks, I think these three portfolio pieces are gonna be a lot stronger. That's all the time that I have for you folks. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you found any value in this, I would greatly appreciate that you smash the like button as it greatly helps out the channel. Also, let me know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your opinions and if you or anybody that you know is actually working in 3D product design, I do go through and read all of these comments. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.